Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Answer to a Riddle. And the riddle was posted earlier, and the question was why there is a need for a fast diode in a gate driver bootstrap circuit. There is a relevant video, which is the earlier posting, and there is a relevant publication, and it's talking about a model for simulating the reverse recovery of a diode by SPICE. I'm going to put these two links in the description part of the YouTube video that you are now watching. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to show some experimental result. Don't miss it, it's very interesting. So the question was, why is there a need for a fast diode in a gate driver bootstrap circuit? Here, I'm showing the phenomena of reverse recovery. This is the PN diode. This is the junction area when the diode is conducting, it's populated by charge carriers. When there are charge carriers in the junction, the diode is actually conducting both ways. So if I have a forward current, here it is, forward current in the diode like this, by this uh, current source, and then there is a reverse voltage imposed here, then the current here will build up, and therefore the current in the diode will start dropping, and in fact it will go negative, and then it sort of recover to zero as it should be because the voltage here is reversed. Now a slow diode will have a long recovery time and very high peak current, reverse current, while a fast diode have a shorter recovery time and a lower peak current. And the question was, why is it that in a bootstrap circuit, here is the bootstrap, this is the floating capacitor, the diode charging it when the midpoint here is zero, this is a half bridge driver, these are the two transistors, current is going out. So when the midpoint is low, this auxiliary voltage is charging the capacitor, and then when the midpoint goes up, the diode is reverse biased, and the capacitor is actually serving as the power supply for the upper driver. Now in this case, whenever the midpoint goes down, there is a charging process, and here we see the current. As the midpoint goes down, here is the current, and again, a next cycle, so that current is flowing at the time when the midpoint goes down, the capacitor is charged, the current dies out, so when the midpoint goes up again, there's no current. And if there is no current, there is no reverse recovery. So the question was, why is there a need for a fast diode with a fast recovery? If the diode is not conducting while the voltage is reversed. So this is the question. So here are two points to consider. For reverse recovery to occur, the PN junction needs to be populated by charge carrier. That is, the diode needs to be conducting before the voltage polarity reversal. As I'm going to show, indeed, in the bootstrap circuit, there are two instances that the reverse recovery could indeed occur. One is during startup, and this will be one time, that is when you turn on the system, and then when the midpoint goes low to high, and this will be every cycle. This is for an outgoing load current, and I'll discuss this later on. So let's start with the startup. At startup, the capacitor has zero voltage on it, and as the midpoint is low, because the low side of course will be on, then it is charging from zero. Here we see the capacitor voltage going up. This is the capacitor current, which is the diode current. This is the diode current. And now depends on the length of this time and the time constant, there is a limiting current resistor here, R sub B, depending on the time, and if the process does not complete within this time, then the diode here is conducting, the voltage now goes up, 
there is a reverse voltage and there's going to be a reverse current so we're going to have here a reverse recovery process of the diode so but this is one time during the turn on could be a couple of cycles but it's one time but there is another issue which is more severe and that is the following when the lower driver is feeding the transistor the lower transistor and the current is going out then the current will be flowing through the transistor but during the dead time that you need before you turn on the upper transistor the low side drive is low and therefore the current will be passing through the dial so in this case there is a voltage drop here and here it's minus so the voltage imposed on the capacitor now is the auxiliary voltage plus this voltage and therefore the capacitor will start charging this is the negative voltage at this point at the midpoint it's negative here so there is a current through the diode and as the midpoint goes up this goes up there is a reverse voltage the diode was conducting just before that and therefore we're going to have the reverse recovery so this will happen every cycle if the current is going up now i'm going to show some simulation of this phenomena by spice or in fact lt spice but we have to be aware of some very important points here first of all spice and of course including lt spice does not simulate accurately the reverse recovery of a dial the reverse recovery process is not built in into the generic diode model so you see some reverse recovery but it is not correct and you need a special model there have been some papers on that and it was referenced at the title page here and also i'm going to put the link on the description section of this uh, youtube video that you are now watching there is however a relationship between the reverse recovery and the transition time this is a parameter of the generic spice model and it is related but it's not a one-to-one -one relationship that is the reverse recovery process is a complicated process in which the transition time is part of it so therefore you cannot say that it's one-to-one -one, but if the transition time is long the recovery time will be long and if the transition time is short the recovery time will be shorter but it's not an accurate measure of the recovery time so within these limitations we can do some simulation nonetheless so here i'm showing models of diodes this is a short key diode these are the parameters of the model and you see that in this short key diode there is a transition time of 21.6 nanoseconds this is a 100 volt diode this is another short key diode it's 90 volt another short key but you see there is no mention of the transition time and the convention is that whenever there is no statement regarding a certain parameter then it is using the default and the default of the generic spice diode model is zero for the transition time so you can say that here transition time here is zero and here now I have a slow diode this is really slow diode for actually it's, it's used for 50 60 hertz I mean like men's diode it's not a switching diode a uh, very old one by the way and it's a silicon diode also 100 volt and you'll see here the transition time is 4.7 microseconds that's fairly long time okay so this is a slow diode again this is not a recovery time but it's related to it so to set up the simulation i've put here two schematics they are actually the same i'm running them in parallel one with the fast diode and one with the slow diode so what we see here here uh, this is a regular driver and this is the high side driver which is fed from this floating bootstrap capacitor 
fed from the auxiliary voltage source 12 volt through this diode. So here we have a short key diode and here this is the slow diode, okay? These are the model of the diode and other than that we have the two transistors which are the power transistor and the load is emulated by this uh, current source here and this current source here and the current is 30 amp. These are hefty transistors. So here now is first of all the midpoint at the dead time. This is just before the low side drive goes low and here we see the voltage drop on the MOSFET. This is RDS on times uh, the current. And then we see here the negative voltage due to the voltage drop of the diode. This is for the fast diode and this is for the slow diode. They are the same because they have nothing to do with the bootstrap. This is just the diode of the MOSFET and the current of the load taking part in this process here. So this is the voltage drop that I was talking about that is adding voltage to the capacitor charging voltage. And here now I'm showing a startup process from zero. This is for the slow diode and this is for the fast diode. The square wave is the midpoint. We see here the current of the diodes. This is the slow diode, the green, and this is the fast diode. And also we see here the capacitor voltage, the floating capacitor voltage that's here, here. So you see that for the fast diode, we see the charging here of the capacitor, and then there is some reverse current during the transition from low to high. In the case of the slow diode, you see a very large reverse current. It's large, you see this is 18, this is the same scale. So you see this is for the fast diode, it's for the slow diode. And also what we see here that the reverse current, which is by the way limited by the resistor, it would have been much larger than that if not for the limiting resistor that I have in series with the diode. You see that this large current is actually discharging the capacitor. And then it charges again and again until it sort of comes to a steady state. So you see that there is a process here of this phenomenon I was talking about. And then here is the steady state. We see the midpoint. We see the reverse current. This is for the slow dial. This is for the fast dial. And if I zoom in, you see what's really happening. The fast diode, well, there is some wiggling here. It's primarily probably the uh, capacitance of the diode rather than the reverse recovery or the reverse current. While here we see a long time, this is affected by the transition time, of course, and notice that this current, which is high already, is limited by the resistor. So for a smaller resistor, it would have been much larger. So you can clearly see that there is a problem here when the, you have a transition between the low to high side, you have a reverse recovery, and of course if the diode is fast it is a short phenomena and if the diode would have been slow diode that could, this could be a problem because this could cause first of all discharge of the capacitor and also it would add losses especially for the resistor in which current will now be going back and forth and this would be dangerous. Now I was talking up to now about the situation in which the current is going out okay so it's feeding the current is generated here feeding out and during the dead time it's going through the diode which is generating this negative voltage which causes all this problem that I was talking about but there could be a situation in which the current is actually reversed going in and this will be in an inverter in this case when this lower driver is on the current is passing through the transistor and once it's going low the drive here and the transistor does not conduct anymore obviously the current now does not go through the diode because the reverse direction 
it goes up through the upper diode. So we do not have this extra negative voltage here in this situation. So it'll be for an outgoing current and not for an ingoing current. And to test this, I have reversed the current of the load in the simulation. And here is what I'm getting. This is the midpoint going up, midpoint going up. And here is the reverse current. Notice now that we are talking about milliamps. This is primarily capacitive uh, current of the fast and the slow down. In fact, the fast diode has a little bit more of a reverse current here, probably larger capacitance, I don't know. In any event, uh, it's very small and negligible. So the problem is when the current is actually coming out. So now I'm showing actual experimental measurement. What we are seeing here is the drive, the low side drive and the upper side drive. We see the diode current and we see the capacitor voltage. Here is the low side driver going down, okay? And this is when we have the dead time we talked about. You see here? the current of the diodes is now positive, it is charging. At this point, the upper transistor starts to conduct, the midpoint goes up, and here we have a reverse current. Now, it's difficult to see it here, so I have sort of copied it here and sort of uh, go went over it with a marker, so you see that we have a very sharp current. This is, by the way, a fast silicon diode. It's not a short key, but it's a fast diode, silicon diode. So we do see a reverse current. It's very short, 30 nanosecond. This is the order of magnitude of fast diodes today. And the peak, unfortunately, is 3M. So it's fairly large peak, but it's a very short time. So the harm is, is not that much, and the energy involved is, of course, very small. So you see that the actual experimental measurement really supports the whole story that I gave earlier. So what is the conclusion and, in fact, the answer to the riddle? Fast dials are indeed required in gate driver bootstrap circuits since reverse recovery occurs during startup and at the midpoint low to high transition due to the extra charging in the dead time period. But this is for an outgoing load current. If the current is coming in, you will not see this phenomenon. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.